and the bar in my home very interesting. I took him in a DVD of Monster House, and there was two little kids there. One was like maybe one, and the other one was like three or so. And they're with their grandma, and I had like one of the cleanest houses of like all all my uh, fellow students. Um, so that was kind of nice. I put on the DVD for them, and the best are watching it. I uh, did uh, examinations on them, and the middle kid, the three-year-old, sounded like he was wheezing. He uh, had some asthma issues. Um, the mother, the grandmother, was perfectly fine, and the little baby. Um, he was pretty much in good health too. Um, then when I was leaving, they both started to cry and the one was trying to grab me from his crib. So I felt bad, so I took both of them to the store and bought him two juice drinks, some Tang, but it had like vitamin, it was vitamin Tang. So I bought him some of that so they can mix it back at home. And I also bought him some cookies so they could, you know, have that when they were finishing watching a movie. Um, I'll be back there tomorrow to say what's up and check on them, do a further detailed examination and get a care plan going for them. I was looking through the meds and like a lot of them were just sitting in a bare wooden drawer, no package or nothing. So. Well, you know, the regulations are different here and that's, we would never be able to do that there back home. But you're right, having it sit out, you know, they don't even have the luxury of having a Ziploc bag that they can put them, put them in and keep them in there. So they really have no other alternative. I know one thing I, I tell you a little story about when we first start coming here. Uh, we went into the ICUs and they were all using this same towel that was really dirty. And we all as faculty from the from a university, we wanted to get rid of that towel. That towel is, you know, it's not, uh, not sanitary. Let's get rid of it and that. But then what would they have? To use. What do you think they would use if they washed their hands and went to dry them? They would do this. And there goes now what was on that towel, even though it's dirty, is now on their uniform. So, you know, you, they, they, you got to look at how they're um, compensating for, for what they have. Uh, but that's a good point. I mean, you wouldn't see that. That's different in the, in the United States. And with, that, with the needles, too? Yeah. Like that's, that's nasty. Because they they were using the same needle and needle on that machine, and people were just breathing that in like over and over again. And that, who knows how old them are? They could be a year old. Right. Well, irregardless how old they are, they are contaminated once they were used and laying in that contaminated bin. Today we went to a hospital and a psych ward, and at the hospital they had eight patients. In a room. We went in and the, one of the nurses there just, we asked qu her questions about their care there and whatever. Like their nurse to patient ratios, one nurse for 34 patients, which was pretty ridiculous. You know, they don't have enough beds for people. I mean, there's just people laying everywhere. And I mean, if you're laying next to a guy, that, you know, has whatever, I mean, you know, you could catch it. And none of them were separated. Like, the person beside you could see everything about you, knew everything about you. Well, it's pretty sad because all the equipment they have, it's really, doesn't seem very efficient. And it's just not clean at all. It just doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem very good. I mean, there's access to health care, but how good is it? I mean, it just it didn't look as sterile as you would expect, but I guess that's the way it is down here. You know, we, we just take so much for granted, just like, oh yeah, you know, just I'm going to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to go to the hospital down here. I mean, I mean, you, you get to the point where you're like, you know, I'd rather die in the street than, than go to, to the hospital. And I think, you know, that's, you know, that's probably how a lot of people feel. 
the second hospital was a psych hospital, and that was kind of scary. You know, the patients are like inmates. It just, it wasn't a good, good sight at all. There was one woman that had her clothes off. She had her gown wrapped around her waist, so her whole top was exposed, and she was pushing her bed around, which was only a box of springs. Like, there was no mattress, there was no blankets, there was nothing, and that, how they sleep, that's what they do. Just the outcasts from people's families, they just put them there because, you know, whatever reason, they didn't want to deal with it anymore. There was people tied down to beds, there was, which, I mean, in some psych hospitals you do see that, but it, it just kind of reminded me almost as like a, sort of like a zoo, sort of, because they were put behind cages and, like, a lot of them didn't get medications because they don't have them. I don't know. I mean, what, you know, what we're used to, I mean, and I keep coming back to that, and I mean, it's just, I don't know. Like, you don't want to compare it to the things in the United States because, I mean, that's just, you know, how, how people deal with things, you know. But it was just, I mean, you, you would never see things like what we saw. And at the end, we have a farewell celebration at the clinic where they dance, some folk dances uh, for us, the students dance with the other children of the, the barrio. So it's just a great celebration um, before we leave. I'm scared to read it out loud. <laughs> okay, the first part says, I hope that you have a safe trip back home. And I hope that you remember me. I liked your gift, and I like, and I, and I love your ear very small details about you and, and for making me laugh a lot and then at the bottom it says I hope you have a Merry Christmas and then it's got the date on it she liked all your qualities and the small the, the, the little things about you it's amazing how they can tell you have a good Christmas
because of you being here, they know someone cares. Keep that in mind. Is that a group cry like this? Oh yeah. That's where you know it, it all comes together. You'll never be appreciated like that again.